guys, it's Paulette here with Talk of Fame 101, and we are back. So, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey. Uh, I appreciate you being here so very much. You have some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, and I just hope to share it with everybody else so they can see how awesome you are. Okay. Um, so, if you could... Just help me and introduce yourself to everyone. Tell everyone exactly who you are, what it is that you do, just so that they have more insight. Well, I my name is Wesley Morgan. Right now, I work at Dollar General after I sold my business on the square in 2009, and I, did, I, I retired. Mm -hmm. And after six months, I was so bored, I ran around and tried to find something to do. And the only thing Dollar General said, well, we got, we got the cash register, we got stock. And I said, I don't care if it's whatever, give me something to do. <laughs> so they gave me a job for 15 hours a week. So we'll try you for 90 days. That's been 11 and a half years ago now. Oh, wow. Okay. But, but I never had a job before. Really? From playing basketball in Europe to working in a, in a shop, my own business. And when I come over here, I had my own business. So and I just appreciate somebody that's paying me a salary. Okay. Appreciate the money anyway it comes, right? You love it, love it. <laughs> I do oil painting. Well, I stopped doing oil painting when I found out that acrylic paint was much easier, it dries faster, and I can paint it on wood, and I can varnish it and look just like oil. Yeah. As an artist, I mean, stretching just goes into painting, you know, everything has to do with art. So it's the first time I've ever been down south. So how long have you been? Here. I came down, I came moved here in 2003. So you said that you played basketball in Europe. Are you from Europe? Did no, no, I'm from Detroit. Oh, I'm from Detroit. Okay. I didn't know that. My mother, because I was coming home every two years to visit my mother, because uh -huh. everybody left. When my, when my mother and father divorced in 1961, he took the oldest one to St. Louis, mm -hmm. and my mother kept the youngest one in Detroit. Okay. Me, as a 19-year-old, guess what I did? I took off. <laughs> Join the military. Okay. I said, I won't come back. I will never come back to Detroit. It took me 27 years before I went back to Detroit. Wow. And that was at my mother's brother's funeral. Me and my two sisters went there. And I haven't been back since. Wow. I'm the only one that ever just left. You're like me, you're the black sheep of the family. I did the same thing. I'm the only one that's left before and hasn't returned. So I understand completely. Wow. I, I said, I'm going to travel the world and learn about everything for 40 years. That is absolutely amazing. And when I left, I was 19. When I come back, I was 58. And now I'm 38. <laughs> so. <laughs> I hope that my age changes like that. <laughs> oh. My older sister called me the other day. She said, you can't change it now, can you? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She said, when you were 60, when you were 76, you changed it around. <laughs> now you're 77, what you gonna do? <laughs> 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 so I, I don't have no choice now, you know. Oh, wow, 77, that's a blessing. So how many languages do you speak? I speak four. Four. Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, sometimes English, and I used to speak fluent German. But I've been doing this since I was four years old. But that means that's your passion, and that's great since four? I'm, I've never been school trained. It's just something I picked up. That's awesome. That's I, awesome. I remember the first picture I painted. My mother told me sis, it was a picture of a farm, mm -hmm. and I painted this guy all black. Mm. And she said, son, the sky is still blue, even though it's mid and dark outside. Yeah. <laughs> and she kept that picture until she died. Aww. And uh, I'll never forget that. So she was a big inspiration. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so what is your family structure like now? Are you currently married? Do you have children? No, yourself? I got divorced in 1985. Okay. And I started traveling. And then my daughter was born. Mm -hmm. And, and um, oh my God, I can't believe she's, she's <laughs> almost 50. <laughs> She'll be 50 years old on the 22nd of next month. Oh, wow. Good Lord. Happy early birthday. <laughs> and then I got grandkids. How many? Two. I got a grandson that's 14. And I got a granddaughter that I haven't seen, and she's 10. Okay. I talk to him on Skype even. And he always asks him, more fire. His grandfather. Uh-huh. Call me to Icky, hear me in. You're not coming home. That's Danish. You're not coming home again? 
I feel so bad because, like, you know, with this pandemic thing, yeah. and in Scandinavia, don't want no Americans coming in their country, not right now. Mm -hmm. But since I'm, I have my Swedish passport, I can go back, but I have to stay in quarantine for two weeks. No, but it's, it's been it's been it's been such a beautiful uh, experience to come back and and just start painting again, because I'd given it up for ten years. Wow. I wouldn't paint nothing else for ten years, because. Like I did this exhibition, it was three brothers in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. and we gave we we he was gonna give us a this big gallery, this big showing in 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 Copenhagen Art Gallery, one of the biggest galleries in the city of Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. His name was Jan Drysdale, a Danish guy. He said, "Hey, I can show," and we were really doing some beautiful work then. Mm -hmm. Three, it was three black Americans, and he took our paintings, and was gonna display it. We haven't seen Jan Drysdale since that day. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen our paintings either. So I lost all interest in painting, Aww. everything. I said, I will never paint again. Then we moved over here. Unfortunately, it's a lot of people that are not of the best nature. And I thought it would be something when I came over here, because like all the artists that I had been training in my studio in Sweden, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and now five people is making a good living out of it, because I opened the shop, Bill and I opened the shop in 1977. Mm -hmm. It took us seven years to build it up where we was making a good living out of it, you know. And uh, then this Amer white American girl, she wanted to learn how to paint. Mm -hmm. So we taught her. Lars Esterlein, the son of Anna Esterlein, very well, very well known artist. Mm -hmm. They had me doing all their framing for them. Okay. They liked the way I framed things, but they never seen no framing like that before. I even showed Hobby Lobby and them how to do it. Mm -hmm. All the little shadow boxes they do in the Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. And all those pictures you see on, on Tyler Perry's series, at the, I did all them. Wow. Inside those series on TV, because yeah. you get the, you get, and see, I build my own frame out of wood. I go to Lowe's, really? back there, a slab of wood, give me that wood, then I put the pieces in the back of it, make it that thick. So if you can still put a frame on it. Yeah. Like I put frames on those up there. See how the frames are, the green yeah, frame? The green one. You just make it, once you build it up, just build you the same wood. Go around and paint it the color you want, and it creates a hell of a picture. It does. I'm telling you, these are absolutely beautiful. When I walked in, I was just stunned. I came in here looking for clothes and got distracted by the paintings. <laughs> like, okay, wait a second. Who did these? Where did you get these from? But nobody does them. And I, you can't find this type of amazing artwork. You know, but don't nobody anywhere. know how to do it. Exactly. And I, and I won't teach all. nobody. <laughs> what else I did? I taught Tim. Somebody at some point. I, I told Tim, the older guy that lived in the building, he just moved to Jacksonville. To, to. First, he didn't know how to do portraits. And, and that's, that's what I, I, I've been doing portraits for many years of people. I love to do people. When I, was in, when I was growing up in Detroit, I used to sit work for the police, sit there, and oh, uh, people and talk. The I sketched the people that they would be asking for. What would you say, if you have one, is your favorite painting you've done thus far? That big lion I have on my wall at home <laughs> is. Five foot wide by six feet tall. Do you have your artwork displayed anywhere for um, Just right here. Just here? Okay. 60 paintings all over the wall. <laughs> Everywhere. All on, you can see, we, yeah, if you count them now, you still see a lot of them. Yeah. And, and those, no, those are the ones I really thought would sell for Christmas two years ago. Mm -hmm. They walked in the carriage. Well, there's Bugs Bunny down there, four foot long. Okay, and I got I got writing up there. What's up, Doc? <laughs> so, well, hopefully after this interview, a lot of people will be looking to come and support you and buy some paintings. Um, I definitely have my eye on a few, so you have one new customer. Now, all these pictures here are from women I took photographs when I was traveling through Africa. And that was going to be one of my questions. So every single picture is a woman that you everyone in contact with. from all the way from Algiers so all the way through the Sahara Desert. All the way down to Niger. That one and that one is from Niger. She's Togolese. Well, she's from Togo. That one and that one. Those up there, I think that's from uh, Niger. That one over there is from Niger. I'd have to, I have to go back into my little, because you know, there's some beautiful black women. Oh my God. I know. Some of the most beautiful black women I've ever seen in my life. You know which and my it's, favorite? It's, which one? That mm. one and that one. Look at those the eyes. Ones? No, that was nice too. But look at the eyes on those two. I didn't. I didn't. Even, but when I'm painting, I don't recognize yeah. it. I, mean, I just so paint. I can tell a story. They're very deep. 
and like see the little girl crying. Yes, I that was that. from. Um, that really nice. That's from. Uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, Lagos in Nigeria. Mm. She was Nigerian, and I caught her crying on the street. Now all the colors and everything. I just did all this yeah, different colors did. myself to give it some life, and you see yeah. the tears coming out of her eyes. Like, I literally have goosebumps. I think for me, now that I know that these are actually individuals that you have come in contact with, like, it's just a, a bigger picture for me. It's a oh, yeah. deeper connection. Um, and that makes them even more beautiful to know that these are actual people. They're real people. Exactly. What Do the beats have a, a particular meaning behind them? So this guy came in in 2000, and what was that? I think it was 2007. And he had all these beats from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the, all the beats there. And he had asked my partner, you think your friend can do something with these beads? And Tom said, yeah. He said, I like somebody that can draw a Louis, make a, do Louis Armstrong and do it in beads. Mm. So when I came out, I said, what? He said, man, can you, I said, I got to think about it first, Tony. Now, how are you going to put the beads on? Mm -hmm. You got to have something hard to put the beads on. And it was all these beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, big beads like that. I said, wow. So I drew the whole, I made me a four foot by four foot wooden board, put the base on it back there. So it was like this and that high. And I drew Louis Armstrong blowing his trumpet. And I put all these beautiful color beads. Mm -hmm. I made the trumpet go, oh, it was beautiful. Wow. One bead had fallen off in 2007. Before I was doing everything in beads. Mm -hmm. But I said, wait a minute, something is wrong. So that's when I started doing this. The main thing in bees, like the hip, the hats, mm -hmm. and then painting the face, because the it came out much better. Yeah, they definitely comp complement each other very well. So, um, well, so, it sounds like you've had an amazing life overall. Um, your artwork is truly beautiful. Before oh. we wrap it up, um, I do have two last questions for you. Okay. One being, do you have a favorite artist or an a, a artist that inspires you, and if so, who? Um, most of, Salvador Dali was one in Monet. Okay. I like Monet because you got you got to be about thirty feet away from it to appreciate his work. Okay. <laughs> and Salvador Dali was a freak. Outside of painting and framing and sculpting um, and stretching, do you have any other talents? Are you musically talented? No. Nope. No. <laughs> I can't carry a note in the truck. <laughs> I wish I could sing. Okay. Oh, well, I did have an ice cream bar too. And three jazz clubs. Oh. And I can cook. Oh, really? What's your favorite dish to cook? And everything. Everything? <laughs> Anything. I don't mess around in too many no fast food places. I cook my own food. That's awesome. That's I, why you're so healthy. And um, I feel good. That's amazing. Except for these people that's, that likes me. They <laughs> bothers me. They annoy me. But I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you allowing me to annoy you for the day. Oh, <laughs> I, like I love your artwork and I love everything that oh, thank you. I've seen from you. So I say thank you so 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 very much to miss sanji over at speaking pieces boutique in mcdonough georgia thank you for lending me your space today um i will be giving you guys more information about her and her boutique in another video to come thank you all for tuning in i know it's been a while since you've seen something from talk of fame but we are back and stronger and better than ever so i hope that you are eager to see more content thank you for following us on social media if you're not doing so be sure to go and follow on all platforms at tof101 but that's cheap to travel there's ways to travel okay and a lot of people don't realize that you can travel and some of them want to get that quick right now if you're in no hurry and you want to say you want to travel from here to uh togo mm -hmm. you can get your flight from 
New, New York or New Jersey, straight to Frankfurt, Germany. From Frankfurt, Germany, you can go to uh, Geneva, Switzerland. From Geneva, Switzerland, you can fly to Lagos in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And it costs you maybe $1,000. <laughs> now, if you want to fly direct, then you're going to pay five grand. Save money and explore more yeah. options. <laughs> go to okay. go from go from New Jersey to Amsterdam. Then from Amsterdam you can catch a what they call a, a three hundred dollars. You can buy your a, a real the transportation is unbelievable in Europe. Really? Oh my <laughs> gosh, you can travel all over Europe on a train for three hundred dollars. Well it was back then, yeah. but then. But you can still get that travel from this city to that city to that city, or you can fly. Yeah. Yeah. And there's only one hour, fifteen minutes from the if you can go from Amsterdam to Paris in an hour and 15 minutes on a flight. Oh, wow. It's just how close everything is there. Yeah. Hopefully once this COVID thing dies down, I'll be able to take advantage Please of it. Please travel. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Now, if you go to Africa, you ain't going to want to come back. Well, I guess that'll be a family trip. So yeah, okay. Start looking for a new home or yeah, something. Yeah, now, like when we was in Togo, the um, 10,000 sefa is $10. That's really? what we lived off for a day. Ten dollars a day, hotel room, food, everything. But that's a lot of money in in Togo. Oh well, then I'm gonna be rich in Togo because I'm going with more well, than ten. Well, when we sold, we and Tony sold our ice cream bowl in Copenhagen for fifty thousand dollars. We split the money and went straight to Africa. Mm. We was only gonna stay for two weeks. <laughs> two years went by. Oh, wow. <laughs> Especially when we found out you could buy a villa for three thousand dollars. Oh my God, we're servants. We're moving tomorrow. Oh my, my God. <laughs> it is so many, well, well in, to, in, in, like in, in, in uh, Lomé, they hadn't seen a black American in over 15 years. Wow. Because a lot of them, the white people go over there and they tell them, oh, uh, oh, black people don't like you, black Americans don't like you. And they come over here and they say the same, oh, Africans don't like don't black like Americans. That's the biggest lie. I said, wow. We got treated like kings. We met the president, Rawlins' wife, in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Oh, they had separated. But now, this was Christmas Eve, 1983. They was having this conference, and, and six African countries was having a conference. No tourists could come in. But we did. Mm, we went all the way up from Lomé, straight up through Togo, come down through Ghana, the northern part of Ghana, mm -hmm. which the borders was closed. Police picked us up. We got went all the way down to Accra. We got four automobiles. How did you get in the country, huh? It's <laughs> the plan, stupid Americans. Well, where you come from? Well, we're Americans. You're not allowed to be in the country. This is Christmas Eve. Oh no! So they put, they they take our passports, put us in jail. They didn't lock the door because we couldn't go nowhere because they had our visa and passport and everything. Here come the chief of police, he come in and say, but they was curious because they hadn't seen no Americans in a while. Right, wow. Well, what are you planning on doing? I want to go home for Christmas, he say. No, that's what the police told us. <laughs> well, how are we going to watch you guys? Everybody want to go home for Christmas. Just let us out. <laughs> I said, what you going to do? He said, I tell you what, he come back in. Come on, you going home with me. Oh, he take wow. us all to his house. We have a Christmas dinner. And then when, when we got through with the dinner, he brought us back to jail. We could get out, we could walk out of here anytime we wanted to, but we had to have somewhere to sleep. Right. And to keep from paying a hotel room, for, they let us sleep in jail. Okay. We stayed there two weeks in, in Accra, and every night we went to his house to eat dinner. Oh. That, that's a story. <laughs> when I tell When I tell people this, they say, but you did what? <laughs> I still can't believe some of the things that, uh, and we drove through the Sahara Desert. We drove from Sweden all the way through Denmark. Took the boat to go from Denmark to Germany in Food Garden. Drove through Germany, drove through France, drove through Spain, all the way to Alicante, Spain. Mm -hmm. Took the boat in Alicante, Spain, across the Algiers, Algiers, across the Mediterranean Sea. And then drove four automobiles straight down through the Sahara Desert, oh. <clears throat> all the way down to Togo. 3,000 miles. Like that was the most interesting life. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that was the most fantastic trip I've ever. I've never seen nothing so beautiful. 